fun creative ways to to screw over your wife for life everyone <laughs> think <laughs> your dad voice. that's a good think title <laughs> fun ways to screw over your wife for life <laughs> Welcome to the Gore Bones Podcast. My name's Scary James. Who are you guys? Spooky Ethan. Uh, Frightening Peter. Frightening Peter. All right. <laughs> um, do we have any new patrons? Are we? Am I catching us oh, out here? Yes, we do. I was like, I'm gonna do that, but I'm installing iOS 16 as we speak because I was like, I was. I'm not gonna touch my phone for two hours anyway. Yep. Fuck. Good yes, God. we do. Notifications was... coming up. We have. Uh, Taylor it's Thomas, one. did we say Taylor Thomas last week? It's just the one? That would yeah. ring the bell. Thanks, thanks for the pledge, Joshua Jones. Thank you very Great much. Great name. That's a couple Joshua. of very good names in a row, actually. I like mm-hmm. that. Yep. Every time, the Taylor Thomas guy was just like, as in Jonathan, and then I just could hear the Home Improvement theme song in my head. And childhood favorite VHS, Wild America, baby. <laughs> So what's your experience with Resident Evil, both guys? Uh, I've I've played 4 and 5 extensively. And I worked on 4, to be fair. Okay, cool. And Peter? I'm in the, cred- uh, I'm in the credits on one of them. Uh, did they spell your name correctly? Unlike they those did. fuckers at Disney yeah. who <laughs> fucked my name up somehow? <laughs> no, they did. Well, what's nice about working in QA is we can QA the credits, too. So if we submit oh, the yeah, credits, we can look at them and be like, hey, you spelled these names wrong. Yeah. All I can say is whoever was Disney side does not copy paste. And yeah. that is a, that is a great thing to know about that studio. They, they got your name from the lore, the Boar Lores Lore Boys episode where I called you Piotr, Piotr Odenug. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I played four, five and six. I never finished six. Um, and I six think, <laughs> sorry, six sucked. Six was so bad. That's what we I watched. Finished. I watched my roommate play it for a bit. And like the dialogue is campy in those games already. And like, it's Which is all good. Very yeah. over the top, but like six was so, it was like, like third se- of the sequel to what is it? Like rise of Skywalker or whatever, like that, that level of bad for me watching okay. it was unbearable. Yeah. <laughs> the, the dialogue, the pacing, like everything that was happening. I was like, this is this is horrible. Ouch. I uh, I played the Leon se- sequence at the beginning of six because uh, it, it's when I used to work at EB Games um, or at GameStop, and I played. So I played the Leon intro, which was pretty cool because it's a lot like Resident Evil Four, but you can walk when you're aiming. And then I got to what I think is the Chris sequence, which is in like Somalia or something like that. Still, where it is just a clunky as fuck. Um, like third person shooter where like everybody is turning into bugs or and it was completely and i, I never finished it because i also i hit that wall of trash basically and could not i couldn't get through the trash wall at all and then obviously i did the episode about it um right. last last spooky season yeah. yeah not trying to cover the same stuff that you did but uh i did one four five seven seven's the only one i beat uh one i like bounced off so quickly because you have to like actually have it's a very a cl- different game cassette yeah. to save uh i opened the front oh, yeah. door being like what what if i just try and leave the, the house and a bunch yeah. of dogs killed me and i didn't dogs. save and I, I lost half an hour um, it's, it's not a cassette isn't it it's a, it's a typewriter it's typewriter ink right? oh that's it's it yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it that's it right my um, mom when i lived up north in kujawak there was a video store in town and my mom would rent uh oh this rings Resident a bell. Evil two i think yeah i've definitely yeah. talked about this before like this rings a bell. yeah and then um my sister, I think I've told this story before. My sister, when we used to watch my neighbor play RE4 before we had our own copy uh, for my computer, um, had said that, like, because the, the Ganados that are, like, the, the, the Spanish villagers in yeah. the fourth one, <laughs> she was like, oh, no, stop. They're yelling at you in their wench language. And we were both just like, that's Spanish, Julia. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Very much a part of my family uh, is Resident Evil. And I've seen all the... Uh, the at least at the time, I'd yeah. seen all the movies up until like 2012. Because cool. the girl I was dating like loved how bad those movies were. So like some of our date nights were just like, let's just roast the the Resident Evil films, basically. 
<laughs> when the way that you said Ari and then like the title or whatever, it made me think of like Ori the Will of the Wisps, but it's R E yeah. Will of the Wisps. And it's yeah. an yeah. animal creature to tell yeah. bunch of zombies. But um But okay, like let's trash all that though. Imagine there's no zombies and you're being chased by dinosaurs the whole fucking time. Oh hell okay. yeah. Cool. Yeah, this is the Dino Crisis episode. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So is it wait? Is it is Dino Crisis related to Resident Evil at all? Yeah, made by the same people, brother. It, yeah. Okay. Made by the same people. Is it the same universe? I guess we're going to get into it. But. Well, not same universe, but it's made by the same guy, and it's made by Capcom at the same time. Right after RE1 came out, they started making, uh, while they were working on Resident Evil 2, they worked on Dino Crisis in, par- in tandem. I've played Dino Crisis 1. Uh, I remember we rented a PS1 from Blockbuster once nice. for like, the stepbrother's birthday. <laughs> And we and I played Dino Christ. That's great. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, made by I have the guy's name uh, G- directed. Shinji Mikami. Yeah, Shinji Mikami. Yeah. Uh, developed by Team Dubbed Cap- Capcom Production Studio Four. Uh, if you've played the first Resident Evil, the first Dino Crisis is closer to that than a lot of other things. Um, so like, I've never played Dino Crisis. I was thinking Time Crisis. I was like the arcade game. Like, uh, uh no, very but... spooky. Yeah, <laughs> you play as a police officer. <laughs> if you've played some of the Dino Crisis, it might not be the scary game that I'm about to talk about because it was scary the first game, became a lot more arcadey the second game, and then completely lost the thread by the third game. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we're mostly focusing on the first game, and then we'll do like a brief summary of all the games that came out afterwards. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, so a lot like Resident Evil, the first one, uh, the camera. The camera is strategically placed at each level, so if you've ever played the old Resident Evil game, like, the camera's just stuck to the roof of this one hallway. It's like a security camera or something that's just, like, watching the room. Yeah. Yeah. And then as you, like, run to the next part of the room, there's, like, a a, a small loading sequence, and then you're looking from uh, the next stationary camera kind of thing. Yeah, and it's, like, tank controls, like, you're... Yeah. You're like steering your character from like above or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, tank were... t- controls make my brain fall apart. I tried to finish <laughs> Silent Hill one, uh, which I have on like PS one classics on my PS three. And um, the fact that the left and right are always the characters left and right. And the camera angle changes when you change rooms every single time your guy walks in has, has a micro stroke and then like rubs against the door frame while you figure out where your hands are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So... Um, or like yeah, or I hate it. Like some games that have tank controls, you just like you walk into a room and it's like the camera angle shift. You're just like still holding the joystick and you just immediately walk back to the room that you yeah. just came from. <laughs> yeah, but you're like in like these games, you're like running from I don't know, like a, a Spinosaurus or something like that, and you're just like yep. panicking and you're just running back and forth between doors, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stuck on. Isn't that why you stop playing? Um... Was it a Senua's Sacrifice? Is like because you kept getting burned to death by jank ass controls. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, there's a section of the game where you're like you're running away from this fire and you're having to have to escape from this burning building. And you have to like sequence like hop over these like hills, uh, hop over these like low walls, or like slide under these low walls. And like for whatever reason, I don't know if my controller bat. Uh, I can't say my controller battery because I was hardwired in uh, at the time. But it was just like I kept like jumping over, and then she'd immediately jump back like back over the wall and then i was just stuck on the wall and she wouldn't hurdle right away and i just like yeah. i died like and i was like I'm not playing this game by the time like you've jumped over then you're pressing the opposite direction and then it yeah. just like keeps going back and forth and yeah um also if you think back to the ps1 era uh this is before the dual shock 2 uh came out so you only had like the buttons to move around you didn't have the two analog sticks uh which is yeah uh yeah it's the controls are challenging for a modern player, for sure. Um, and let's be real, the PS1 pre-DualShock controller did yeah. not have a D-pad. It had a solid chunk of plastic that yeah. just had four raised parts on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, like, the, the this use of the camera, too, where it really removes control from the player, it leads to surprises ahead or behind you, because you can't just tilt the camera back a little bit and look all the way down the hallway. You gotta yeah, physically yeah. have to walk down the hallway to know it's at the end of the hallway. Uh, you can't just lean over and look on the other side of the screen. I don't know if you've ever had a brain fart and done that, because I oh. have. <laughs> I mean, of course. <laughs> <laughs> as if it's a window, you're like, 
yeah. What, what's on the other side of my like 1080p curtains? Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I can't remember that happening. Maybe when I was young, that's happening. That's like a pet who's watching like a squirrel on a TV or something, and then it runs off the yeah, side. It, it is. Yeah. yeah. I, it but, happened to me recently enough that that like those those dead neurons are still in my skull somewhere <laughs> because like I think I did it to myself. Like within the past year, I did it. Wow. It's like when you're it's like when you're uh, playing a racing game and you like you lean. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you're going into the corners. Like it's the same the same time. I do definitely do the lean for sure. Mm. Yeah. Uh this can also like the way the cameras are set up can also feel really claustrophobic because you're only seeing like one little part of the hallway. And imagine you're being chased by a really big monster like you often are in Resident Evil or when a dinosaur is following you. Uh, so it, <laughs> the lack of control from the cameras, the surprising nature of like going around corners or down hallways and like the claustrophobia all really adds to this like unsettling horror aspect of the game. But, um, so like we were saying, Dino Crisis was directed and produced by Shinji Mikami. Uh, and it is a spiritual successor to Resident Evil. They wanted to move away. This is so silly to me. They wanted to move away uh, from the fantasy elements of zombies to something more real. So, <laughs> get which, your heads out of your asses, okay? You know, none of this stupid zombie bullshit. <laughs> but Bring you're bringing dinosaurs, dinosaurs back from the dead as well. They're still fucking zombies. They're zombies, yeah. yeah. But actually, uh, as we'll find out later, there's a whole bunch of time travel, which I guess oh, great. was not <laughs> part of the fantasy elements of things. But, yeah. Raising the dead is stupid that jurassic park movie <laughs> stupid yep <laughs> yeah. oh, that's great uh so some major influence for the game jurassic park uh aliens um and I can't, that. yeah yeah mikami liked dinosaurs because they were large strong fearsome and violent so pretty cool sure huh? fair good this alien this is a very good comparison or aliens yeah. rather is a good comparison because i never i you get so caught up in the like sexual design of like hr geiger's artwork uh, shout out to Morn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that you cut, you you kind of you kind of lose track of it in the second movie when they are basically just like hundreds of velociraptors from Jurassic Park. Yeah, it, yeah. a good comparison of Dino Crisis One to Dino Crisis Two is also Alien to Aliens. Uh, you only ever okay. like see one Dino on screen in the first one. Uh, it's a lot like more horror uh, and like ambiance where uh, Dino Crisis Two is just like nuts to butts like shooting and there's a bunch of there's a bunch yeah exactly dino slogan yeah yeah i have never heard that expression before i'm gonna bag me a brachiosaur nuts to butts is i would i just want a shirt that says that we we use that a lot in the wow community when you have to stack up uh for like certain raid mechanics everybody has to be on top yeah everybody be on top of each other so nuts to butts you know that's great yeah love that um yeah so the game was marketed as panic horror instead of survival horror uh resident evil kind of a lot slower the zombies don't move quick you have time to run back like pull out your gun make a decision even though it's uh you have to make a pretty big decision because your bullets are valuable um you're not sure if you should shoot sometimes that's not the right thing to do but this is uh panic horror so it's more consistent fright the dinosaurs are quicker, they're smarter, and they can chase you from room to room a lot faster than the zombies can. The zombies can't change uh, instances in Resident Evil, right? Like, if you go through a door, you're safe? I think they can follow you, I'm but I, the one. I haven't like, played I know I, I'm talking RE1, like, from, like, before we were born or whatever. I've never, I've never played one. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've played, played, I've played a bit of two and three, but I've never played one. Okay. Yeah. So, like, Mikami set up Resident Evil as horror in the funhouse, so, uh, and Dino Crisis is more, like, visceral horror, like, riding a, a roller coaster, like, keep things moving. Um, Resident Evil combined, like, Texas Chainsaw Mar Massacre, where you're, like, locked in a house with the hordes of zombies from Dawn of the Dead, uh, and you kind of got to play out your own horror movie, and if you played your bullets right and your cards right, then you might just survive the experience, so. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is supposed to be much faster paced. A little, uh, Resident Evil fact, they're supposed to use zombies instead, or instead of zombies, you're going to use ghosts at first, but it wasn't a great design because you just had to run away all the time and you couldn't fight back. <laughs> uh, so they're like, no, nah, we're going to trash that. So we're going to keep zombies in so you can have a bit more control. Uh, ammo will be a thing. Uh, you'll have to shoot and, uh, 
you just wouldn't have to run all the time. You could fight. What was the idea before dinosaurs then? Uh, the dinosaurs were uh, was zombies <laughs> came before dinosaurs. Okay, yeah. so they, they, they dinosaur that one dinosaur in. ghosts. Yeah. Okay, of course. The, yeah. the national so like, ghost, the, get that no, fantasy shit out of there. No dinosaur yeah. ghosts, just no, time travel. Dinosaur ghosts. I said, yeah. no, let's just make it dinosaurs. The natural progression and ghost to zombie to dinosaur, right? It's, yeah, that's yes. okay. how it happened. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a Digimon evolution, frankly. Yep. Nuts uh, to butts, ghosts to zombies to dinosaurs. <laughs> Nuts to butts to ghosts to zombies to dinosaurs. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so Dino Crisis is like really similar to uh, Resident Evil One in a lot of ways. Um, you still have to run for the dinos. Uh, you're still able to kill some of them. Uh, major difference is the pace. Dinos are faster, smarter, look better than ever, uh, and you end up also uh, getting like a stun gun at a certain point. Uh, the stun gun adds another level of unease because you don't know how long that when you shoot this like. Oh, it's like a trank dart. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a trank dart. So you shoot it, and it like falls down, and then it's like, all right, like how long do I have I'm, to explore this have... room <laughs> until this thing gets up again? You know, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah I've always good. lamented the fact. So I played Med Metal Gear Solid Five, and I'm sorry, I didn't like it, but I love that the that the trank dart has a has a time limit on it because I love doing non lethal playthroughs, and that. The, and that ticking timer, like it's like screenwriting 101 is like a ticking clock, right? And in games that I love, like Deus Ex Human Revolution, Mankind Divided, Dishonored, the Trank Dart and just fucking killing someone is the same. Like they never yeah. get up, right? Yeah. Unless somebody, but they can be woken up from being, they can be like, hey, wake up. And like those wake magic up. words no, are the... Yeah, those magic those magic words are like the the cure for being knocked out with poison. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's like it, time, it's functionally identical. Work. It's work time, not nap because of poison time. Yeah, <laughs> you're all confused, my friend. <laughs> Gotta be reminded to be awake. Like, yeah. oh yeah, whoops. Guess I forgot. I don't know. It's weird. Uh, there's uh, you play, yeah. you play as a main character uh, Regina, who we'll get into a little bit later. She's a female lead. Um, and there's this one awesome scene where a pterodactyl comes and picks up Regina from, like, the back from her, or, like, the scruffs of her arms or whatever. But then she fights free midair and, like, lands on her feet on a roof. And the pterodactyl lands right in front of her, but into an industrial fan. And just gets, like, torn, <laughs> torn, like, PT torn up, like, tor torn. Torn. Uh, uh, yeah. and torn Yeah. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. Uh, torn dactyl, yeah. Yeah. That's... I'm gonna tear a dactyl you limb from limb. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, a great scene. And because awesome. I I do distinctly remember the like origami box person graphics from the PS One. So obviously this scene probably looks so bad it's good, right? Uh, yeah, so it, it really is PS One graphics and what you'd expect from a PS One. Like like everyone has it's broken up into these big polygons like for their each of their limbs or whatever like your arm is three balls basically yeah right? it's the hand is just like a triangle with fingers painted onto it sort of thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. um dino crisis one let's see if i can find when you think it. about it our hands are just like three balls with ten balls at the end of it right just stretched except when, out. You're, when you're a baby they're five and then they turn into three right yeah exactly <laughs> from the bonus content <laughs> we're talking about how babies are different <laughs> uh, oh got three bones yeah, I, I I'm not finding a good picture here, but anyways. Well, here you're 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 running the show. Well, I'll, I'll pull up the clip. Yeah, cool. They added injuries, so if you got bit in the arm, um, that you would be like start bleeding out unless you wrapped it up. Um, so you, this would reduce your health, and blood trails would actually attract dinos. Uh, oh, cool. cool. Yeah. So the devs decided to let bleed out effects reduce you down to one HP instead of killing you, because they found that it made like more fun. Like, instead of just dying to bleeding out. just be frustrating, out. yeah. Yeah. And then you have one HP, so you, like, can't get anything hit you, oh, yeah. and it's exciting moments. And um, one thing that was different, um, Resident Evil, if you remember, it's a lot like Final, like some of the early Final Fantasies, uh, like Final Fantasy VII, for example. They have animations for the characters and the NPCs or the items that you need to use, but the background is all, like, a 2D... Um, a 2d static image okay and this okay. just saves like me make, makes it able like you just have more memory to do other stuff uh, that resident evil did it that way 
But Dino Crisis is like, no, we're making our own engine. We're going to have 3D environments with a custom engine. So everything was like part of the 3D engine and nothing was a static <laughs> image. Oh, yeah. I found the video. <laughs> oh, yeah, the video's good. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to watch the video in in uh, audio. Uh, I mean, if you could describe it. To- if you're, yeah, if you're if you're driving a forklift right now, just hop onto the internet and look up this Dino Crisis video while you're driving your forklift. Yeah, and, yeah. and watch it along with us. Um, I'd like to give Laszlo Ola uh, a bump in views because since 2013, he's only gotten 1,107 views on this fantastic, um, on this fantastic clip. And I mean, I don't need to describe it, Jamie. You described it perfectly. Uh, <laughs> Regina gets picked up by a pteranodon. Then she shakes herself free immediately, and yeah. then instead of landing, it basically looks like it kills itself. Like out of embarrassment, it just yeah. dives. Into, <laughs> it, it just it, it dives yeah. into like a nine foot wide industrial fan. It's just shredded yeah. into pieces. You get splash oh, blood God, effects. Up again. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a living. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would the Flintstones industrial fan be? <laughs> I'm writing that one down, baby. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so another interesting thing from this game, um, the devs couldn't find any real dinosaurs to use as references for their animations, as you might imagine. What? Oh, well, obviously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, yeah. it's, he's like, pictures. Yeah. There's lots of pictures of dinosaurs, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, I had, I had a nine-year-old child moment there. Like, <laughs> dad told me that we go zoo <laughs> the park safari where there's dinosaurs. Yeah. I mean, so, it's, Jurassic Park was out at this point. Yeah, but Just watch the movie. What they did instead is they watched videos of lions and tigers. Um, okay. So we got some uh, T Rexes that move like lions and tigers, and some of the biting animations are combinations of dog and crocodile attacks. So cool. That's uh, yeah, but I can see that crocodiles are related for one, and I mean yeah. dogs have a long snoot. Yeah. At least like normal ones do. So that is a pretty good animation reference. Yeah. Lion- lions and tigers and T Rexes. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> um so this is kind of all the preamble uh do you guys have any questions so far about dino crisis and where we're going did you play uh, it i actually haven't played it except for i think one that's really bad um at okay. a friend's place um that was like it came with its own gun uh but the gun was so bad people just used the dual shock too um, oh fuck okay and anyways uh yeah i didn't play him not good yeah um is newman in it because he, he was in jurassic park um canonically he could be because okay. there is time anomalies um and okay in later games entire cities are transported through these time anomalies and stuff so we could get like mid '90s Seinfeld, like, New York, <laughs> teleport yeah. into Dino Crisis yeah. one of these days. Good. So yeah, right. yeah, cool. Um, so I think we'll j- jump in for an early break, and when we come back, we'll go through the story of the first one, uh, and then little uh, information about all the next sequels. Nice. All right. So see you in a bit. Hello, and welcome back from the break. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Ethan was preventing me from starting the recording because he kept saying big long yeses. No. (laughs) Listeners, that's a lie. Don't let Jamie slander me to you. Come on. So we're about to hop into the actual story, and Ethan found a cool piece of art uh, that features the main character along with some dinos. Um, Yeah, it seems like there's a comic series that's based on it because there's like a lot of these these style of cover arts, but it's like uh, it's a Japanese comic, obviously. but me and Pete were saying that it looks like uh, propaganda, honestly. Just like the way that the faces are framed behind these, like, the dino threat. Yep. The dino threat is a threat to you. Vote uh, no <laughs> on letting dinosaurs marry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'd be amiss. I, I forgot to say that this was requested by Fragile Shark. Uh, when I said, oh. "What are the what is something that I would like uh, for a spooky game? And he kind of hit the nail on the head. Uh, and he said, this is the closest I've come to asking for a specific episode on a specific day, and I hope it happens. And it pretty much will happen exactly for you, because it's as close as we can get to Halloween. Uh, yeah. Or not next if, week will be a Not if my cool. sabotage works and I, I suck Jamie's whole apartment into a time hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so It'll still come out just a week late. Yeah. Yep. 
So not on a specific day. What are you saying, Pete? There, there was somebody he asked us to kill, too, by invoking them on the show. Was it Gorbachev? Is he still alive? Uh, uh, Kissinger, maybe? I think Kissinger. Yeah. Boy, I, I hope nothing Kissinger. bad happens to Henry Kissinger in Dino Crisis. I think <laughs> that works. So, actual game story. Uh, if you want to play the first game and have no spoilers, um, well, I guess see ya. But it's <laughs> it's real see old at this point. Yeah. It's, it's more enjoyable to listen to us talk about it than it is to enjoy it yourself yeah yeah, yeah. driving the forklift just like pull out both wired headphones throw your phone <laughs> yeah <laughs> plug in your ps1 and wired yeah. <laughs> wired controller yeah exactly uh so in 2009 uh, the actual game came out in like 1998 1999 1999 um in 2009 it, when the game is set the secret operation raid team or sort they send an That's agent. That's a bad one. <laughs> yeah, they send an agent. Oh, yeah. It's like, don't worry. We'll send someone in to sort things out. And then just, like, hangs up the phone and, like, what, what, yeah. are, they, are they sending anyone to help? Yeah. <laughs> guy behind a locked door with raging dinosaurs outside. <laughs> yeah. They send an agent sort. named Tom to investigate. Okay, what does Tom stand for? Um, Top uh, Operation Man. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, I was I was trying to find like tall only man, but no, yours is better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep, to investigate tall, tall only man. Yeah, tall, tall only man only fans. Would you sub to my tall only mans? <laughs> 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 only for men's. Yeah, yeah. And only for tall ones. Yeah. Wait, is it is it only tall people on only tall men on only mans, or is it only for tall people to enjoy? Honestly, I think it's just a suit store that is labeled for tall people, but it's really for fat people. Okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> tall yeah. only mans, yeah. Yeah, that's You're, you're going to want to go to our tall husky section department. Is... <laughs> <laughs> which, 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 which I'll need to go to as well. So, <laughs> to investigate, a res- uh, they send Tom to investigate a research facility on Ibis Island, Ibis Island, I-B-I-S. I, it's, Ibis is a kind of bird, I think. Ibis Island. Yeah. Uh, he learns that Dr. Edward Kirk, a world-renowned scientist who was reported dead three years ago, is leading a secret weapons project within the facility. Um, okay. And okay. we, I did some like background research on this, and one of the in-game governments actually faked Kirk's death so they could keep him doing experiments for them. My my other guess was time travel shenanigans, where like three years ago he t- popped into a time loop or, or you know t- popped into a time hole and then was gone for a certain amount of time like, that, it's, one, it's either that or chat or shadow off right yeah not a bad guess um pretty much every game here is going to uh involve government meddling resulting in time problems and then people having to go sort it out uh, Good. Okay. That's if I had to do this episode in in fifteen seconds. That's what I would say. And that was... Just like real life, <laughs> the government always friggin' yeah. worrying us with their friggin' time holes and dino crises. Like, yeah. God, man. <laughs> so sort. Um... It's dino crisis actors. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> so Tom got there first. They're like, "Where's Tom? Um, we don't know where Tom is." So they send. Uh, they send sort. Um, to go after Tom. Tom um, off screen gets devoured hey, by a T Rex. Hey, go sort him out, would ya? Mm. Yeah. Uh, so off screen, Tom gets eaten by um, a T Rex. So that's cool. Okay. So th- to sort out the the question of who sorts out the police, the answer is the police. They just send another agent. They send four yeah. this time. They're like the one went missing, so we better send four. And the next okay. time we'll you guys get two 12. phones, okay, yeah, between yeah. you. Yeah. Use the buddy system. <laughs> <laughs> Look anywhere right that's your buddy. <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing I forgot to mention in the preamble, they only use like, I think six or eight different dinosaurs in the game um, because they wanted them to originally have all separate AIs and like uh, be able to track and move and predict and hunt you. Um PlayStation 1 didn't have enough power for all of that fun AI stuff. So they just did um, like a smaller pool of dinosaurs and made the AI as good as they could, but they had bigger, wider plans for it that never. Yeah, I like to, you know. the ambition of old game devs. Like, I know there's like a story where in like Half Life 1, they were like, oh, we want grass to grow in real time. It's like, fucking why? 
one. <laughs> but also cool. But at least, but it's opposed to like nowadays where it's just like, oh yeah, this purple drop is an NFT. So yeah. I, I, I'd go I'd go back to needless needless grass growing like in a fucking heartbeat. Yeah. I mean, Pete, I know you're not online, but NFTs are dead. They, oh yeah. Yeah. I think I think oh. overall traffic is down like 97 percent since oh, like last shit. year. Um. Yeah. So okay. So six dinosaurs, you say? Eight. Yeah. There's. Eight. Eight. Well, so, okay. Wait. I, we want. I want to see if we can guess them. Okay. So we let, got the. Let me pull them up. Let me pull them up. We got the Tyranna Tyrannosaur. Peter, you you kept calling him Don. I don't know why. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Don, Tom, or Regina. Everybody's got a regular like white person name. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, we've got a T Rex for sure. Right. Yeah. Velo- Velociraptors for sure. Or, or raptors, like velociraptors as seen in Jurassic Park. Wait, wait, okay, wait. Right? It's six. It's six. Uh, okay. Do you want me to tell you each one or at the end if you're right? Are those were those three? Were we right? Velociraptor, yes. Um, yeah. Tyrannosaurus, T-Rex. T-Rex, T-Rex. yes. What was the other one? Tyrannosaur. The the flying one that drops, that flies into a propeller. That oh, one, yeah. That was a it's a pterodon, actually. It is yeah, what Peter I'm said. Sorry. He knew it. I know. I know it is. This is, this is a running meme with. A, I, oh, think I remember. One episode where we you thought about it. Yeah, yeah I, re- I refuse to accept his, his alternate headcanon. The other I ones when I was six years old. Other ones, <laughs> a lot harder. I'll say. Brontosaur. No, it's not going to be. No. It's not going to be a leaf eater. They're all going to be. Are they all carnivores? Do you know, James? Uh, one is. It's like. Are I'm, they all enemies? They're Triceratops. Stegosaur. I couldn't tell you. If Ankylosaur? I was going to guess that one because it's armored. That'd be a great gimmick uh, boss. They'd what? have very good weak points. None of them end in sore from now on. There's one Saurus. Ankylosaurus? There's th- I, Tr- I think I have to give them to you. I don't think you'll get them. They're really hard. Okay. Oh, yeah. What do we got? There's Compsognathus, a small oh, bird-sized yeah. One, yeah, Com- Compsognathus, Comp-sub- I think. <laughs> they are in the second Jurassic oh, yeah. Park. They eat the Russian guy. Oh yeah, yeah, they're like yeah. the little scavenger ones. There's Therizinosaurus, a large sloth-like oh, yeah, it's... dinosaur it's got big fingers. with big claws. Yeah, they're found oh, in the wow. latter part of the game. They're quite hard to kill because, especially when there's more than one of them, uh, and they're found in open areas. Uh, alternate name for the ther- Therizinosaurus: the Reaping Lizard. Which is a wow. cool last name. Yeah. You see that thing's fucking hands? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. And yeah. the last one, which is the easiest to say of those three, uh, the blue raptor. Bull, bull raptor. Okay. <laughs> blue raptor. Um, Dabbadee dabbadee. And just for fun, uh, look up short nosed bear versus human size. Uh, <laughs> I, I was like thinking about. Um, holy. Look how big these bears used to be. This is like two and a half times as tall as humans. So uh, this game's supposed to play oh, on... Oh, holy Jesus. Okay. Yeah, this game's supposed to play on our uh, emotions, on like running from animals or whatever. Like they think that we ran from dinosaurs way back when, I guess, in this game, which we didn't. But this is something that we actually ran away from, and it was only like 200 years ago or something like that, I think. Or maybe not 200. Maybe a lot longer. When the Ice no, Age ended, ended, all of the like megafauna died out as well. This but is like megafauna. mammoths and like big bears and like short nosed bears, like mammoths and and, and short nosed bears, like existed in the same parallel time as Egyptians, right? Yeah. Like when you think about like how crazy that is. Yeah. So people yeah. hunted and killed this thing, but it also for sure hunted and imagine it running full speed. Oh boy! Imagine I, I put a picture of a giant sloth, but those were also oh yeah insanely big. These are, by the way, guys... the last few aren't in the game. We're just geeking out about big animals. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you, you guys ever seen the giant sloth tunnels that they yeah. Uh, carve? Yeah. No. Absolutely scary, dude. Yeah, they're in, like, South America somewhere. Yeah, Brazil. Brazil, they're huge. I'm trying to put, I'm trying to paste it for you. Yeah. Today. Anyway, it's a big tunnel for the listeners. Yeah. If you're driving a forklift right now, just while you're driving, just look up giant sloth. They're big. Yeah. Hey, Siri, show me giant sloth tunnel while you're... <laughs> While, okay. while you're just like lifting up a pallet of yeah. uh, industrial chemicals, I guess. Okay, yep. Google, uh, search Rule 34, Giant Sloth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> holy shit! That's a serious. That's a serious tunnel. Yeah, it like looks like a just like a a huge cave. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it's insane. Yeah. Um. Okay, back to the game. We got we got a little sidetracked, but so Edward Kirk, world-renowned scientist, reported dead. Really, he's out on Innis Island. 
Uh, they send out Tom. He gets eaten by T-Rex. So they send R.I.P. Out... Tom. Yeah, ripped MySpace Tom. He was our friend, <laughs> and now he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Sort sends four agents. Uh, Regina, who's our main character, the badass uh, red-haired girl. Mm-hmm. Um, Gail, Rick, and Cooper. To okay. uh. That's a good fucking squad. Yeah. <laughs> Regina Gale. Rick All right, I'll go to Dinosaur Island to find Tom, but I get to pick my own men. It's like, God damn it, you know we took away Cooper's bat, Rick and Cooper's badge from years ago. <laughs> yeah. So they wanted to get Kirk and return him to custody. Um, so they. We arrived. heard he was dead, and we're going to arrest him for that. Yep. <laughs> yep. Can't be dead on a, a lot. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you can't. You can't. <laughs> Claim your life. It's insurance fraud, right? Yeah. He claims yeah. his life insurance. Can't be dead all alive. Dead. Wanted dead. Okay, so <laughs> he's just wanted, wanted dead <laughs> while alive. <laughs> uh, um, here's a question: If you take your death, um, and you go to a secret island to study dinosaurs, mm-hmm. and your wife claims your uh, life insurance, yeah, assuming she doesn't know, does she go to jail for insurance fraud, or do you? You do. There's no way you would have to, yeah. But you probably she probably had to pay it back. Yeah, but that's that's like that might as well be a prison sentence. Like you can't, yeah. right? You, yeah, you they'd spend call the it money back. like after three years, like yeah, yeah. They'd, and they'd probably go after it for like back taxes too. You know, it's yeah. just like it's like under the table, <laughs> under the table dinosaur experiments. You know, <laughs> that's what the Here's... IRS is going after. Yeah, fun creative ways to to screw over your wife for life. Everyone, <laughs> make <laughs> your death. Boys. That's a good Thank title. You. Fun ways to screw up your wife for life. <laughs> I was at a bar and I was talking to some like middle-aged old man and he was trying to tell me all these tricks and like, no, you should like put your money here instead of here. That way, if you get divorced, then uh, she won't be able to get it. And like, I'm like, uh, okay, I'm not even married. <laughs> um, yeah. So, anyways. Okay, but where? On Ebus Island, with no, no, a but, dead scientist. But where? I should put my money with a dead scientist. On yeah. Island? Yeah, because you can hide it outside of time. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like international waters, international time. Yeah. <laughs> That's why the banks have all those clocks with all the different time zones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's so good. I can pirate music and avoid taxes. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? So, so the team arrives on the island, Regina, Gale, Rick, and Cooper, under the cover of darkness, dropping in via Gale parachute. Is I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Regina's the only one I really care about. She is a chick. Gail probably is a chick. I know Rick and Cooper are both guys, but Gail can be a, a boy's name too. Yeah, yeah. like Shannon. Yeah. It's Unisex. Like uh, Leslie. Like Alex Beverly. Man. Like Mackenzie. Like yeah. Lost in the Dark. Yeah. Jamie. Uh, Jamie. Jamie could be a girl's name. Jeez, yeah, Louise, guys. I met a. Sorry, I met a right there. I met a girl named Jamie a couple nights ago. She's like, I'm Jamie. I'm like, me too. What's up? That's good. You know, a girl named Frightening Pete. So. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. I'd like to meet her. <laughs> yeah. She's too scary for you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, guys, let, let me get this straight. I mixed up. I, I switched it all up. Uh, so, Tom never actually got eaten. Tom just went there. He found out about the scientists and he went home. The person who gets eaten uh, is Cooper because Cooper gets blown off course in the jungle away from the others. And he's lost in the dark, and he's chased down by a T-Rex and eaten. But the other three I feel, agents, I feel less bad about Cooper dying than Tom, honestly. Yeah. I was pretty gutted when Tom died, but Cooper? <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. Exactly. Fuck Cooper. He was blown off course, though. So uh, did they airdrop into Dinosaur uh, to Ibis Island? They parachuted Island? in. Yeah, they parachuted Fuck yeah. Uh, Very cool. Very nice. I, I assumed that uh, they were sailing home after the Trojan War, and he made a deal with Poseidon but betrayed him. And it's not <laughs> Snuck onto his island of uh, golden cows and yeah. uh, had some of the milk and slept with his daughter. I assume that that's what happened. But... Yeah, that's what happens to Dino Crisis. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so the three other agents, they're unaware of his death, of Cooper's death, and they just proceed with the mission. I will, they'll, buddy, they said buddy system, but it, we have three buddies, so I don't think we can really send one person because I'm going to be breaking that buddy system. So. Uh, <laughs> They, they they're not particularly together. good at this, are they? If the if the, if they're like doing this secret government mission and they haven't heard from a guy in actual hours after he was blown off course, they're like, yeah, yeah he probably went back to the government. 
Yeah, but before cell phones, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know all, they had radios in the Second World War. Like They definitely have walkie-talkies. <laughs> Uh, once it, so they get inside the base, and the agents discover an eviscerated and partially devoured bunch of corpses of security personnel and scientists. Um, so they split up uh, right away, and they restore power to the facility. That's just part of the game. Gale goes missing. And while searching for him... Oh, I got the him. That is a guy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Regina, or you just misgendered him there. I copy pasted this because I was in a rush. <laughs> <laughs> this is one sentence. Yep. Regina is confronted by a velociraptor. So you get to have your first run in with a dino and get to do your running and shooting and stuff. Uh, and then you reunite with Rick and the two determined that it was dinosaurs that caused the bloodbath. They're like, what if it was that dinosaur that did all the blow we just saw? <laughs> <laughs> so they figured that mm, out let, let's see the damage is pretty uh it's so strange you know it, it almost looks like bite marks but i don't know i don't know any mouth that big <laughs> yeah. honestly so yeah probably just a stabbing lots of stabbings you know yeah like each each you know these are all let's nice just say we found an isis flag too whatever yeah yeah <laughs> you, got, you got a bag of crack you can put on them just <laughs> yeah. make, uh, yes. make this report easier when we go home maybe we can go home <laughs> with heroes Ah, uh, yes, the a broken off sharp tooth embedded in a leg bone and the distinctive claw marks of the street drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so although their mission to find Dr. Kirk was still their main objective, now they are like, well, we should probably signal for a rescue because uh, they, they got to send in 12 the next time or something instead of four. Uh, we did the one, we did the four, and we're already uh, in too deep, so... Yeah. Well, they sent in five, and one guy was just like, shit's fucked, I'm out of here. And they sent in four other people. Well, yeah, they sent the one in first as recon. He came home, sent in the four. Yeah. And right. Then, yeah. So Regina sends out to activate the main antenna to contact their airlift, so video games. She's trying to uh, start, like, be able to open up contact or whatever. And she gets attacked by another velociraptor. Uh, but she's rescued by Gale, uh, who shows up again, last minute uh, rescue, which is very cool. Uh, then they keep looking uh, for Dr. Kirk and to restore the communications. They get the communications back on, and Regina held, heads back to the control room, and they get a signal. Uh, they thought it might be Cooper or Tom in trouble, or I guess Tom might still be there. It's unclear. Uh, Rick wants to investigate, so Gail's like, no, 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 we do not want to investigate. But we did see a person on a CCTV or whatever. Like, you know, the closed circuit television security cameras? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're like, so now you have to choose. A, do we go out and look for Cooper? Or do we stay and follow the stranger from the CCTV? Uh, right. If you follow Gale, you go after an unknown man and end up losing him. Um, and then Rick, uh, Rick will tell you that Tom's dead. Um. And if you follow Rick, they come across Tom, a badly, really badly injured and near death. And you get to see him almost die, uh, but you take him to the medical room. But there's a really good scene where they open the medical room and the lights are already on. And just a, a dinosaur that's sleeping on the floor of like, what's the size of a doctor's room? Like stands <laughs> up and then just goes after them. Um, but uh, Tom sacrifices himself to kill it and save Rick. Tom's almost dead, anyways. So you see, this okay. is this is the uh, the survivors writing history. Like they didn't like throw his body on the floor <laughs> in between them and the dinosaur. There <laughs> you go, Tom. Yeah, you know, my space is going to be Open dead. Open the door! Soon. Open the door! <laughs> <laughs> He's still asleep. He's still asleep. The dinosaur's still asleep. Just open the door. Let me back out. It's going to be fine. <laughs> It like locks with that like rotating two handles, so it's like, yeah. it's like, yeah. <laughs> that's what wakes yeah. it up. <laughs> so at at this point, now they've like found a helicopter. They're almost ready to leave. Um, yeah, they're they're like things are going great. So they're about to leave from the helicopter, and then the T Rex shows up and destroys the helicopter, forcing them awesome. back. Into I'm the glad base. it knew. Yeah, rad. Yeah. I kind of wish. <laughs> I kind of wish the introduction to the dinosaurs was the same as like the introduction of like the villagers in Resident Evil 4 where it's like just it's like hey have you seen this guy and he's like trying to hand a polaroid photo to a velociraptor. <laughs> 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 yeah, so now they need another way out. Regina and Rick go to the facility, find keys to a watercraft, 
but there's a time vortex in the way. Um, and there's no way to get rid of it, uh, as they know. So Rick speculates that it's a space-time distortion that brought the dinosaurs back. They're starting to figure it out. And they it's sp- weird how it, it went to like several different periods of time and yeah. just plucked a single dinosaur out of that rift, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Very organized. Well, it's like a couple million years in between, you know, d- dinosaur A and dinosaur B ever yeah. having existed, you know? Like, Dude, uh, it gets even crazier by the third one when they've completely lost their mind. Uh, there's like a place in like dinosaurs history that gets a time distortion. So they go back and Noah's Ark it. So they find all the right types of dinosaurs to repopulate the area. But also there's like a city that gets moved and it's, I couldn't even uh, start to attempt the third one. It was fucking, it was, it was really cool though. When, uh, that Velociraptor came down from the mountain with the two stone tablets, then started the Red Sea though. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. it was a pretty epic moment. That's it. That's yeah. what we call a gamer moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, they flee. They find the watercraft, uh, the keys to the watercraft. Can't quite get to it. Um, Rick starts to speculate space time, uh, and then they split up to find an alternate route off the island. But Regina be ends up being held at gunpoint by Doctor Kirk. Our missing. Wait, scientist. does the space time thing? Is it like a? Is it like a? a like a sci-fi fence? It's a portal it's that's in between that where they need to go. It's video games can't go down this hall yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I just mean they're on an island, which is kind of like, oh no, and they just like get on a boat, and just like do an L shape off of it to get around. Oh they're yeah, in. they don't have a boat. Yeah, they found the keys, but a vortex is in the way of getting to it somehow. So we can paint our own sorry, picture. On sorry, how, folks, yeah. docks closed. There's another space time rift on it. <laughs> <laughs> gotta wait till it clears up or yeah even picture they're going around and as soon as they get around the hedge um regina's held at gunpoint by dr kirk okay and he's about to kill her he's like this was my plan it explains everything probably because he doesn't just shoot her and then gail Classic. shoots the gun out of his hand pretty badass and they arrest him kirk reveals the dinosaurs were brought to their time by an experiment he is running use his third energy technology so what's third energy? Um, in this universe, at the turn of the 21st century, fossil fuels drained so much to an extent that nuclear power uh, was called second energy because they ran out of first energy. Um, okay. But it was really hazardous because of accidents and the waste that was being um, that was coming from it. Uh, when in reality, like actual nuclear power plants, when run properly and dispose of waste properly, is way better for the planet. But anyways, in this <laughs> one, I mean, in, I mean, yeah. the waste the waste is a legitimate concern that nobody has a good solution for yet. Yeah. But if you're talking deaths per capita, like oil oil and coal got you beat by by the billions, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Without but a doubt. In this dino uh, universe or whatever, uh, mm. this was a really big problem. So he started working on something. Dinosaurs keep getting into the reactors and blowing everything up. Yeah. <laughs> no, they, yeah, it's, it's, it's a loop because he took all the dinosaurs yeah. to the future. None of them died and created the fossil fuels in the first place. And... Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> that, that, that adds up. Yeah. So he's, he's running a hundred million year racket to what, like <laughs> sell atomic energy to the u.s government yeah. by... <laughs> he, al- he also pulled he also brought forward all the prehistoric plants because that is actually what oil is mostly comprised of is, yeah is it's um, flora, but yeah old wood and like that uh, the compressed swamp dirt or whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah pete pete yeah they called you pete and they called me old wood <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so not actually, he didn't ruin the fossil fuels, but they were trying to get away from this second energy, and he was doing experiments um, on a third type of reactor, which releases no waste products, uh, and is, like, never exhaustible, uh, but it's dubbed third energy. So it's some magic. It's basically magic. It just, it just, you see, I use the time vortex to shoot all the waste product 10 years into the future, so we don't ever have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we find out that there's a government behind this that who was uh, found out that he was doing the third energy thing um, and sent him to this island basically to make the third energy so they could use it for warfare. 
Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's what the Iran nuclear deal is about, right? Is where we don't want them accidentally importing dinosaurs into yeah. the yeah. Iran while obviously while the Ayatollah is still in charge because he would irresponsibly or use dinosaurs in a way the U.S. government doesn't approve of, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So uh, he did this, that a rift of space was created, and a pocket of the island from their time was exchanged with the same from the past. So it just flipped spaces, uh, bringing dinosaurs back into their time. I think the third one's all about bringing the dinosaurs back to where they took the dinosaurs from to fix time from being changed forever or something. But anyways, I, I'm not clear on it. But for this one, Kirk tells them if the reactors are set to overload... The energy coming from them and the vortex should cancel each other out um, when they come into contact. So you have to go off and get the stabilizer, the initializer, use them to overload the reactors. The energy shakes the base, causes a vent to fail, um, to, uh, a vent to fall on Gale, allowing Kirk to get free again. So Kirk uh, scurries off. Uh, and then the team heads towards the waterway to escape the blast. But Gale says they still need to capture the doctor. So he's hobbling away. Um, and he's trying to go after Kirk because he just had a vent fall on him. And the <laughs> orders uh, Regina and Rick are to is leave. It, is it ironic? I'm sorry. Yeah, Gale know. is like a type of wind, right? Like a violent wind. Is it ironic <laughs> oh, yeah, that he's yeah. pinned by a vent? vent. Yeah. <laughs> which would let wind escape? <laughs> yep. Yes, it is. I like uh, how he still wants to go back and capture Dr. Kirk as if it's just like they've just encountered dinosaurs and time travel and it's just like the mission's changed like not for me it hasn't yeah. and he's like <laughs> he's crushed by an crushed by a vent trying to drag himself away yeah he says uh, yeah as he's dragging himself away on his forearms or whatever he's like yeah. if I don't come back in 30 minutes leave without me Regina and Rick um, so now you as a player get a choice Let's go after Dr. Kirk or escape with Rick and you can get three different endings depending on how all your um, sh like choices up until this point, basically. Well, that was only oh, two choices. Cool. How do you get the third ending? Well, there's two choices now, but we had two choices before, and oh, okay. there also might be two different ways. I've never, I haven't actually played the end of the game, so I'm not okay. sure. Yeah. Yeah. But there are three endings. What's the, the good ending? I'll save that one for last. Oh, but I'm gonna guess it's Doctor Rick. <laughs> yeah, that all that. The the endings all involve a battle with a T-Rex and escaping the island either from the watercraft or the helicopter. Okay. okay. Yeah, so we get away. Uh, so if Regina chases Kirk, Gale reveals that the whole mission was a front and the government did not want Kirk, but instead wanted the third energy to use in warfare. They're, like right. the, the sort government, not the Kirk government. It's just opposing governments trying to fight for this third energy. Hmm. Um. After giving Regina a disc containing all the data for the third energy, Gale dies from his injuries. Regina, Rick, and Dr. Kirk escape the island. Okay. And then the other one is due to a uh, the propaganda campaign to cover up a dinosaur-related incident. The Soviet Union eventually collapses, right? And that's why we can't have clean dinosaur energy now. It's just people are still paranoid about it. Yeah. Pretty, oh yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, another ending sees Regina knocking out Gale and then leaving instead uh, of chasing Dr. Kirk, allowing him to escape. So you just punch your friend out and take him with you. Okay. okay. <laughs> that's the third ending. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then the very last ending, or what's considered the best ending, Regina knocks out Gale, so to send her send him back, and so so he wouldn't With die. Yeah. But then chases Kirk by herself, resulting in the capture and the team escaping by helicopter. And Regina, okay. regardless of the ending, summarizes the fate of all the characters uh, in an email to her superiors, then declaring herself ready for the next assignment, uh, even though. It's been for evil government all along. So I'm not sure that's the best ending, but that is the best <laughs> ending. <laughs> um, and that's Dino Crisis 1. I have all the other games here. We can briefly go over them. Uh, Dino Crisis 2 gets rid of the puzzles, limited ammo, focus on combat. They get rid of the 3D rendered world, and they go back to the 2D backgrounds. Uh, this is because still PS1, we need more performance. Right. Um, so this is more like you go from screen to screen, waves of dinos come, you shoot them with your guns because you always have enough ammo, and as you kill them, you get combo points if you kill them in quick succession, which makes more like dinos. Metal slug now, basically? Yeah. This is actually really well received, this one. Um, there is a lot of positive reviews. One of the best third-person shooters at the time is the year 2000. 
Um, it's a lot easier to get into than a horror type game. I feel like. But, yeah, just sure. a completely different kind of game. Right? Yeah, For sure. it sold way oh, yeah. less though. It sold way less just because of the timing. Uh, I think PS2 came out like three months after this game, and it was for the PS1. Okay. Um, right, yeah. The game before had like over two million in sales. This one had like one point nineteen million in sales. Uh, it was still really strong, but uh, it's this one's supposed to be really fun, anyways. This Dino Crisis Two footage I'm watching now. So uh, it it still looks like it has tank controls because every time the screen changes, yeah. the the guy playing the character like bumps into the wall next to him. Yeah. But it is fucking hilarious that it is basically just without context. At least clicking to the one hour ten minutes mark, it is just a man running through the jungle and small dinosaurs just jump out at him it and waves. he just. Yeah. <laughs> one shot kills him immediately with a shotgun yeah like no thought no context i've got it on mute i don't know if he's saying anything like quippy but yeah it's just like just a man in body armor just like yeah just like absolutely ending their existence and like i said earlier it's like alien to aliens this is like if you wanted to action packed you don't want to have to be stuck at places like this is just like go no, and no, shoot no. yeah this one... it's it... a crisis act like it yeah <laughs> Next up, uh, 2002, a uh, bad game came out, or in a lot of people's mind, bad game. Dino Stalker. It's Dino a Stalker chasing that halo high yeah. in 2002. <laughs> Do you guys know what a light gun shooter means? I had to look it up. It's the arcade cabinet. It is like Time Crisis. As long as you've got, oh, okay. yeah, it comes with a gun. So you might have played this back in the day, Ethan. Uh, but the thing is, the gun was really bad, so people would just use the, the DualShock 2 to move the reticle. Because it's not like a first-person shooter where you would move the camera and the reticle's always in the middle. You're just going through something and you're moving the reticle trying to like get a up. rail shooter, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, the controls were awful. The game was okay. Um, there's timed missions that people hated. Uh, it looked bad compared to other games at the time, starting to fall behind. Uh, and at this point, we're so far from the survival horror roots. Um, we're just not winning the fan base over anymore either. And then there's Dino Crisis Dungeon and Chaos, a 2003 mobile game. Ooh. Wow, that is... Wow. Uh, it played <laughs> like Doom. It looks just like Doom, but you like have to physically like move one forward at a time to go from box to box to box. And then you would run into something and you press one button to shoot. There, there are people who probably listen to our podcast who are too young to understand how limited phones were in 2003. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, like, I, I am floored. I'm even yeah. looking at pictures. This looks like a marvel of technology, honestly. Yeah. For 2003. It, it, it looks kind of cool. Like, if I had a 2003 flip phone and I could play this on the go, I would like it. Right. There's, like, a map set up. You go through and you shoot dinosaurs. But it's mm -hmm. really, like, it's almost like a turn-based doom. Like, it's yeah. really, really <laughs> slow. Um, yeah, holy shit yeah very cool and then there's dino crisis 3 uh set in the year 2548 way 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 longer 300 years 2548 yeah Jesus. it's been wow, 300 years that. since the earth lost contact with the colony ship osmandius en route to a squared somehow the ship has reappeared near jupiter a team called soar special operations and reconnaissance is sent aboard <laughs> the probe ship uh blah 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 and there's a bunch of time travel bullshit there's so much less about dinosaurs like the first hours of the game is all about a love interest and no one's no one's looking for a love interest in dino crisis 3 you know we're looking to shoot some dinosaurs or get scared yeah but all the on. uh all the dinosaurs i'm looking at at the dino the dino crisis 3 cover is kind of cool but yeah. like it's got like a t-rex and like a longer spaceship. It kind of looks like the Pillar of Autumn, I guess, from Halo. Yeah. But like all the dinosaur designs have like stretched out skin and exposed muscle. They all look like they're covered in scar tissue. Yeah. Um, and then there's one picture here that just looks like the guy from Final Fantasy Spirits Within on the cover. And <laughs> yep. I'll send it to you guys because there's just a big red sticker that just says, scan me on it. Yeah. <laughs> they planned for like all this stuff. They wanted to have like AI uh, multiplayer type thing where you could like have your own <laughs> skin. Uh, where you could have like a, a team of people follow you around. You actually go out into space with like jetpacks and shoot and stuff. And they just took on so much that like none of it played well. Landed, yeah. 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 Okay, so the the derelict spaceship filled with dinosaurs in orbit around Jupiter is a 
great fucking idea for a video game. Yeah. And if someone's listening who wants to make that, do it. I'll pay. I'll, I will buy it day one. <laughs> so this as, is the thing. as a sequel to a long running series of horror games. Like what? What? It's just like, oh, sir, there's a derelict spaceship full of dinosaurs in orbit around Jupiter, and like from Earth, he's like, leave it there. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this is the thing. What are they gonna do? Drive with their stupid little hands? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can't move the ship. <laughs> Blow like, it up. I, I don't care. Crash it into Jupiter. What do we care about fucking Jupiter? <laughs> exactly. It's huge. This is the thing, though. This all these games were good up until the third. Basically, they they kind of strayed from the path. Um, not the and then the railgun was really bad, but the Xbox just like put the nail in the coffin that that game. Um, but everybody who likes the Dino Crisis series wants another one. Someone went and made uh, Unreal uh, Unreal Engine Five like teaser of what Dino Crisis Four could look like. And of course on. they did. Jesus Christ! And it's, it's like it's very cool <clears throat> looking, but it's like a whole genre of YouTube video is just like blank in Unreal Engine Five at this point. Yeah. <laughs> On, if if they gave me a new Dino Crisis and it was a good one, uh, probably I'd want a little more of the survival horror and a little less of the run and gun. Um, I, I think I'd be into it after after looking these all up. So I'm hoping oh, damn, they do it. But you uh, would just you run right download. out the front door and get swarmed by dogs and give up on the game. If it's survival <laughs> so I want it in the middle a little bit, you know, okay. like yeah, yeah, little, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if give you me wanna... a better autosave, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same concept. Here, just don't make me lose thirty minutes of my yep. fucking life. <laughs> yep, <laughs> exactly. So that's been Dino Crisis. Um, you're welcome, Fragile Shark. It's a, a longtime patron, so I'm happy to get one in for him again. Um, and if you guys ever do run into um, a, a PS1 copy of it, let me know how that goes because it, it looks interesting. But, yeah, I'm sure you could PS1? emulate it. I don't think it exists anymore. <laughs> they sold two million copies. <laughs> Out of the 2 million copies, there's right. got to be a couple that survived the... the there's probably one that's years. unopened out there somewhere. 25 years. Okay. Um, yeah, cool. Great. Thanks, Jamie. Very spooky. <laughs> um, thanks for listening, everybody. If you guys want to help the show, you guys can leave us a review uh, on iTunes or whatever your podcast app of choice is. I know the iTunes ones really counts. That's kind of how iTunes... Uh, aggregates their their shows and decide what's the best. So if you want to leave us a five star review, it'd be much appreciated. Um, and yeah, if you guys want to get in touch, contact at loreboys.com, uh, loreboyspodcast at gmail.com, or you can join the Discord. And there's a link in the description below. Uh, Peter, what's going on with you these days? Oh, at Loreboys Podcast on Instagram. If you want to see the title cards. Um, otherwise, things are moving along with my publisher. There was a one of the guys who was uh, like reviewing some work I did that I wanted to submit for November got did not get COVID, but got different germs and was debilitatingly sick. So that got delayed by about a week, but he's better now. So is, it the, is it the same guy who was sick at Comic Con? No, other one. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, Chris. Uh, <laughs> Chris was fine <laughs> After, uh, uh, this week, at least. No, it was Mike, the uh, the beard guy with the beads. Yeah. Got uh, got very ill. Um, but he's better now, so um, I should have some very exciting information about like a demo release of a little bit of the comic in oh. November, I should hope, because uh, that is the plan. That's why we wanted to get uh, a little bit out. I don't remember if I talked about it before, but it was like I was like I I d- done like twenty five thirty pages, and I was like, yeah, and I want to do more so we can like tease people about it. They're like, Pete, you've done too much. We're not going <laughs> to give people a thirty year fucking thing. It's just like choose. We'll choose five pages. Like that's it. So yeah. Uh, November's in a week, just uh, since you're promising things in deadline speed. And uh, I know how the we deadline all, at that all point is time. out of my control. All the work I had to do is done. So it is it is in the it's in the hands of corporate at this point, basically. So, cool. Yeah. Cool. so yeah, it, November 2nd was my latest deadline, but I've been done for weeks at this point. So we'll see what happens next month. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Jibo, what's going on with you, big guy? Uh, not too much. Since I'm uh, fighting with my WoW people i'm on steam right now so go on j a y m i l k find me on steam and uh add me on steam i've got a bunch of you folks and uh it's fun to uh play games see what you're playing and get to know you a little better so that's it yeah uh yeah if you guys want to support the show financially we do have a patreon patreon.com slash low boys if you guys don't want to buy jamie games on steam then i didn't uh, say we... that i said let's be <laughs> friends use, use the money, we'll just use the money on the, uh, from patreon um yeah. Yeah, no, it really does help the show. Helps us pay for the the costs that we have and and buy things like uh, new mic stuff like that. 
yeah. uh, as we need them. So we do super appreciate everyone yeah. who's uh, supported us so far. And it helps uh, us get the gas to, what was it, Long Boner, Ontario or whatever? Yeah, Boner Law. Boner yeah. Law, okay. Boner Law. So there's, <laughs> there's surprisingly no laws about bo- boners. Wow. None on the books. It's like <laughs> Airbud. Um, <laughs> hey, nothing said you can't walk around in town with your boner out. <laughs> right, it's still a movie about a golden retriever. It's awful. The, the, the oh, rules don't they don't explicitly say that. Um, yeah, you can go to patreon.com slash loreboys. There is also a link in the description. We do also have a merch store that you can check out some of our merch. Some of it's pretty cool. Uh, we don't make a ton of money on that, but it is always super, super cool to know that people are just buying it and wearing it. Awesome. Yeah, put it up when we can and uh, buy it before it gets taken down by Disney. Yeah, we have been copyright striked at least once. Uh, by the by, the mouse. Uh, <laughs> if you guys, if you guys don't trust Patreon. We do, of course, have Lord Boys Prime, where we are offering a very special service, uh, which we kind of alluded to a little bit earlier in this episode. Of course, it is fun ways to screw over your wife for life. So uh, <laughs> we have been hard at work. Your your patron bucks are are not going to waste over here. We've been doing a lot of research. We we kind of gave you guys the uh, the freebie earlier about faking uh, faking your own death and having your wife claim your life insurance and then revealing that you're not dead and having her go to debtor's jail. Um, <laughs> <Wait. laughs> like Dead Jail, the Tower of London. <laughs> what, what was it? What was the the tagline for this? How to screw your wife for fun, life? Fun, fun ways to screw over your wife for, for life. Okay, how to knock her up then knock her down. I like yeah. that. One. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's okay. Uh, if you were a lawyer on a billboard, that would be a great thing to put on that billboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah a divorce lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a divorce slash alimony slash uh, child support lawyer. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, another, a uh, couple other freebie ideas, I guess. You could always uh, just convince the government uh, that she actually developed a new form of uh, producing power. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, I know that the government will tell the globalist elites and she'll be, you know, she'll be disappeared in no time. Honestly, oh. if you can, <laughs> Put <laughs> super glue in her yeah. shoes when she's not wearing socks. Yeah, yeah, or dead mice in her shoes. Yeah, that's oh. something my cat likes to do sometimes, and it's oh, good. God. It gets us. <laughs> oh, that's squishy. Mine, who you can see right here, does not do that to me, thankfully, because uh, <laughs> I don't have a mouse problem on the third floor. <laughs> thankfully. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's just that's just a couple of the ways that we're gonna help you guys screw up your your wife. wife. Four uh, lives. Yeah, whether it's a boy wife, a girl wife, whatever kind of wife you got, mm-hmm. uh, an unmarried wife, you a know, midwife. spider wife, whatever it is, midwife, spider wife. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, my wife is. Yo, know, my wife is so mid, bro. <laughs> it's, it's real good, no cap it's mid good i don't know uh, no i think it's it's yeah. i mean it's like average i average, think, I think yeah. it's, it's like oh, middling. Mid's mid mid yeah. it's, like, it's yeah. average mid-link. to like also like suggesting under average a little bit i feel like oh okay yeah. Yeah. i think well just being average is like under average yeah right? it's true in this economy <laughs> yeah, inflation. Thanks, Biden. Uh, if, yeah, yeah, joe brandon made me uglier like, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. cool. I think that will cost you a lore boys. Lore boys. Out. Out. Oh no, the kiss for the patrons. I take that back. You have to change the beaver skin diaper. Babies are reprogramming the population. Wake up, sheeple. Poop is gross. (laughs) Tinfoil diaper.